to Hannity. Tonight, it's been almost 100 days since the tragic Sandy Hook school shooting in Connecticut. And today, President Obama used this solemn day to try and reignite his efforts to limit your Second Amendment rights. I'm Eric Bowling, in tonight for Sean. In a moment, I'll be joined by Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. But first, here's the backstory. Earlier today, President Obama gave prepared remarks on gun safety, and he tried to explain that the Senate's gun control proposals are consistent with the Second Amendment. Watch. Earlier this month, the Senate advanced some of the most important reforms designed to reduce gun violence. All of them are consistent with the Second Amendment. None of them will infringe on the rights of responsible gun owners. What they will do is keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people who put others at risk. And this is our best chance in more than a decade to take common sense steps that will save lives. Wow. This is our best chance. Unfortunately for the Obama administration, not all law-abiding gun owners agree. But he didn't stop there. President Obama even went so far as to say that his proposals are not controversial. Watch. None of these ideas should be controversial. Why wouldn't we want to make it more difficult for a dangerous person to get his or her hand on a gun? Why wouldn't we want to close the loophole that allows as many as 40 percent of all gun purchases to take place without a background check? Why wouldn't we do that? And if you ask most Americans outside of Washington, including many gun owners, some of these ideas, they don't consider them controversial. Unfortunately, Mr. President, some of the measures you are proposing are controversial and will limit the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding gun owners. Joining me now to explain is none other than Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. Welcome to the program, Senator. Glad to be with you, Eric. All right, Senator, first, please, your reaction to President Obama's claims earlier today. Well, you know, I'm, I'm still really saddened and disappointed by the whole thing. You know, the, the shooting was just a horrible tragedy. I have three kids, and my heart goes out to those families. I don't, I don't know how they can be made whole again. I don't know you, how you can ever forget your kids being killed at school. That being said, I think it's a mistake for either side to politicize this, you know. The president uses them as a backdrop and drama for getting some kind of political will. But my question to the president is, call me if any of your reforms would have saved those kids at, at Sandy Hook. If anything he's proposing would have changed the outcome, I'll listen to him. I haven't heard one proposal from him or Harry Reid that would have saved one life. And I'm all for saving lives, and I think it's a real and horrible tragedy. But I think it's a mistake to play on the, the, these victims and the, the emotions of their tragedy when nothing he's proposing would change one, one iota of what happened. Senator, you bring up uh, Senator Harry Reid, uh, Senate Majority Leader Reid. He's going to bring a bill to the Senate floor, I guess, within days, uh, in the next couple of weeks or so. Um, tell us about your plans for that bill specifically. How do you, will you filibuster? Let me ask you point blank. Will you filibuster that? We plan on making them have at least 60 votes to pass any legislation that, that may abridge the Second Amendment. So we will fight tooth and nail and use every parliamentary procedure to stop that from happening. We have a lot of things on the books that the president says he wants to enhance. Many of these can be enhanced without any legislation. Background checks already do work. We already have rules that say mental health statistics need to come from the states into the data bank. Interestingly, some of the most pro-gun control states in our country are the ones not giving up their mental health information. So I think there's a lot of room where things could be improved, but unfortunately still none of this would have changed the outcome. In fact, the only thing that would have changed the outcome, potentially changed the outcome, is something that so many people don't want to hear, and that's self-defense. That if someone there had had a concealed carry, if someone had been armed, they might have had a fighting chance. They might not have saved everybody, but they might have been able to save some of those. Well, Senator, you, you sent a letter to, um, to, to Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. If I could just pull up a line from that letter. You say, uh, we will oppose the, the motion to proceed uh, to any legislation that will serve as a vehicle for any additional gun restrictions. Sir, um, I, I just want to get this straight. Will you or will you not use the Senate floor and filibuster this bill to be, before it goes to a vote? 
we will filibuster the bill. We won't let them bring it forward because our fear is that once it comes forward, they'll come forward with something that sounds benign in the beginning, but we already have the Feinstein Amendment that talks about banning certain types of guns. That is inconsistent with the Second Amendment. And what people need to remember is that most crimes are committed, nearly 90% of crimes are committed with guns that are bought illegally. Criminals do crime. They don't pay attention to our laws. We have laws against murder, and we should have laws against murder, but that doesn't seem to be deterring these people. The, the penalty for murder can be death. It can be life in prison. We have significant penalties for murder, and that's not deterring these crimes. So somehow an extra permit or a fine for buying a gun improperly is going to stop someone who's a mass murderer. Okay. What happens so often is politicians just want to act quickly. They want to do something, and the president's into showmanship. He wants to show people that he cares, but in the end, he's not really going to do anything that would have, have made the outcome different. Yes, sir. Okay, so we, we will have, we'll see a filibuster if that comes to the floor. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg is spending $12 million of his personal fortune to stake out a position on guns, sir. Could you give us your reaction to the big city mayor? Specifically, is he a hypocrite after all? He has quite a bit of security contingent that are loaded with guns. I think the, you know, I don't begrudge any famous person like Mayor Bloomberg or the president or the president's family from having protection. I think they all should. There's enough crazy people out there that would attack people on the right or the left. But I think when, when you are being protected by people who have weapons, who are responsible people, I, I can't see why you would uh, be opposed to that for other people. And so, yes, many rich Hollywood celebrities have armed guards with them at all times, and then many regular people who live in a poor neighborhood, who have a business in a poor neighborhood, and a neighborhood that may have higher crime, those people have to suffer the vicissitudes of, of uh, violent crime without protection sometimes because of gun control laws. So yes, I think there is a certain amount of hypocrisy. Sure. Okay, sir, I, you know, I love my Kimber 1911 45 caliber, and I also love my Browning over-under shotgun. Uh, what's your favorite firearm? Uh, I'm a good old shotgun guy, and uh, I grew up not being really much of a hunter or a fire a marksman or anything like that, but I would shoot skeet and still do shoot skeet on occasion with friends. All right, Senator, before we let you go, very quickly, is the leadership behind you, McConnell, Boehner, Canner, do they stand with you, sir? I haven't seen any signs of uh, the cracks breaking or any kind of fissure within the Republican Party. The one thing about the Republican Party is, you know, we defend the Second Amendment, but we also try to defend the entire Bill of Rights. Some on the left are good with the First Amendment, but, you know, the Second Amendment is sort of a dirty amendment to them. I think all the Bill of Rights is the same, and they all deserve protection. All right, we're going to leave it there. Senator Rand Paul, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you.